you decided change is necessary and good for Jackson. On January 14, 2014, 9 out of 10 Jackson voters approved an extra 1% sales tax to pay for needed repairs to roads, bridges, sewer, and other infrastructure improvements. And now Jackson is well on its way to becoming a bold new city. A look now at just how this journey to our bold new city began. After that landmark vote in 2014, the city needed a plan. Jackson Mayor Tony Yarber began citywide listening tours to hear your ideas. The, the purpose of the tours is to give you an opportunity to talk to us. Uh, we have been extremely excited about the feedback that we've been getting. That same year, a commission was put in place to make sure your money is spent wisely and effectively. As a member of the 1% Sales Tax Commission, we have the responsibility of working to look at the projects before us, determining the revenue, how the revenue will be directed, and prioritizing that. Among those priorities, fixing potholes. The commission agreed to use some 1% money for the work, and in May of this year, Mayor Yaber announced a pothole blitz. So behind us, you see a pothole patching machine. You see men who are out as a part of the crews that we started beefing up to go by ward by ward in order to see that many of these issues are being dealt with. Those potholes will soon be dealt with a lot faster. The city is also using 1% sales tax money to buy a new $240,000 pothole patching machine and is purchasing a new VAC truck. Both should roll into Jackson this fall. The city is also resurfacing roads and has kick-started Operation Orange Cone. It covers neighborhood and major streets and pothole patching in all seven wards. Now, within three months of announcing this project, sections of more than 20 streets have been resurfaced with your 1% sales tax dollars. I think it's wonderful because these streets have been in terrible shape for so long. Operation Orange Cone will continue through early fall of 2016 and will eventually cover streets citywide. And sections of other streets getting a makeover with 1% sales tax money, Forest Hill, McClure Road, Watkins Drive, and Lynch Street Extension. The city put up $600,000 in matching funds to help repair them as part of an interlocal agreement with Hines County. Very, very important. I'm glad that, that they're doing that. It shows that we got uh, uh, responsible leadership. Soon you will see some major streets in better shape too. The city has agreed on four major roadway projects to implement during year one. State Street, West County Line Road, Medgar Evers Boulevard, and Riverside Drive. Design consultants have been hired for each and are already sketching out ideas. Some include multi-youth paths, you can walk, ride your bike, or even jog while safely sharing the road with cars. These proposed designs that you see here, State Street. Consultants showed them off to area residents during a June listening session and asked for comments or other suggestions. Construction could start next year. And more than roads are in better shape now thanks to your tax money. bridges are too. With the snip of that ribbon, the Hanging Moss Road Bridge reopened in June. We are excited. This is not only a time saving, but it's safer to us to drive. That's most important. The bridge was closed in 2015 because of structural damage. Nearly $400,000 of 1% sales tax funds were used to return it to motorists. This was made possible because you made the decision to have a sacrifice. Y'all chose to raise your taxes so when we had situations like this bridge going out, we would have the resources not to have to beg the state or beg the federal government, but to take care of this problem ourselves. Here's another problem bridge approved under year one to be taken care of with your 1% money. The Robinson Road Bridge. A consultant is coming up with a design to replace it and construction could start this fall. Other bridges approved under year one are May Street Bridge, Ready Mix Street 2 Bridge, and Country Club Drive Bridge. And you may remember back in 2013, the city came up with a master drainage plan. It was used to help identify drainage projects that should be fixed with 1% funds. 14 were selected for year one, but because there is not enough money for all of them, that list had to be narrowed. 
The six most critical ones listed here will be repaired under phase one. Design consultants have already been hired to start that process. The other eight will be repaired once money becomes available. And there is a lot of money going to repair water lines too. The four selected for improvements under year one are listed here. Design consultants are already on the job and are working on ways to improve the water lines on Lawrence Road, Hanging Moss, and Woodell Drive. But in the East Overdrive area, construction crews are already at work after a July groundbreaking. Two, three. All right. We have a water line that has experienced at least 20 breaks over the last year uh, that is now being replaced. This will be upsizing uh, the water lines to uh, 12 inches, uh, basically from Frontage Road all the way to Ridgewood Road, which will be a great benefit to our development that we have here, the district at Eastover, as well as our state facilities and uh, the residential facilities. Michael Burner is a 1% commission member and spoke at the Eastover groundbreaking. We're really excited to see this project underway. Uh, we've got a lot more projects in the pipeline uh, that we're ready to get going. The mayor and city council members are moving fast to help get those projects going too. Most recently, during their August 23rd meeting, they gave the go-ahead to hire contractors to repair sections of six more major streets, Ridgewood, Briarwood, Northside, Raymond, McRaven, and Gallatin. As of now, the city has collected over $33 million in sales tax revenue and obligated about $30 million of that. Now, it's worth note to mention that the city uses an integrated planning approach to understand and strategically address the infrastructure needs for roads, bridges, water, and wastewater, as well as stormwater improvements to ensure that all the community's aspirations are taken into account. Adopting this approach ensures that the city does not compromise your water quality and environmental conditions and puts in place safeguards to ensure that your tax dollars are spent on much needed projects. By adopting this approach, the city is making sure that triple bottom line benefits in social, economic, and environmental sectors are achieved to promote sustainable development. A lot of work ahead and to finish it all is expected to take another 15 to 20 years. But for Mayor Yarber, perhaps he summed it up best during his 2016 State of the City Address. Ladies and gentlemen, this is progress. And you can keep up with what's going on on the 1% Project by following us on Twitter at WeAreJackson or by visiting us online at data.jacksonms.gov.